Round two, everybody. Round two. Um, yeah, we're back here with your instant match reaction. Apologies for that. Um, yeah, bloody hell. Let's start that again. Um, Leeds United losing out to Sunderland uh, this evening. In a very drab um, performance, Ipswich gaining the advantage now, um, regaining their points tally. And yeah, a real shame from from where Leeds were in terms of just dragging them back a little bit. And it is a bit of a psychological hit, to be honest with you. Um, I'm a little bit downbeat after that one, I have to say. You know, just looking at the scorecard now and Ipswich are going to be absolutely buzzing. Leicester have got Millwall tomorrow night, which you'll probably be expecting to win. And... <sighs> At a point, generally, when you are looking at these teams dropping off, they might have a quick niggle here, there, and everywhere. Um, you know, a quick, a quick draw, a quick, a quick um, loss. But the problem is, Leeds are having to be perfect. You know, we've won seven games out of nine, and we're still what is it now? Nine, ten points off Ipswich now. Um, I'm not saying, obviously, you know, we're not we're not cataclysmic here, and we're not saying it's done. It's a massive, we're just having a look at the table now. And yeah, we are 10 points off Ipswich now, which is it's big. It's big. Same amount, same amount of games. They've got a better goal difference as well. Um, and, I, you know, in general, it's a big blow tonight. It's one of those uh, championship calendar fixtures where because the top two are just running away with it at the minute, just in terms of the points tally, numerically, quantitatively, um, Leeds are having to really be perfect. And we, we were not perfect tonight, but you cannot afford to not be perfect. You just can't. We have to be because of, of of their surge at the minute. And my overriding thoughts tonight were that Daniel Farker got it completely wrong. We were doing the same things game state-wise for the entire 90 minutes. Nothing changed. And Leeds have been poor, in my opinion, for a few weeks. Results-wise, fantastic. I didn't think we were good against Swansea, I'll be honest. I thought that first half they were the better team. Blackburn, I thought there was large parts where Blackburn were the better team and we didn't look great, but individual quality got us out of it. And I think there's been, and Rotherham was not a good game whatsoever. Borough, yeah, okay, we're the better team, but, you know, they got back into it. I think there's been a few games now where Leeds have been all right, but what gets us out of it? The front four, every single time. And that's why I've always said on this channel that systematically Ipswich are better than Leeds, but we have the better quality of player. Farker tonight got it completely wrong systematically. We couldn't play through a press. We couldn't put, play through a press against Swansea in that first half. We couldn't play through a press against Blackburn when they were man marking us pretty much, you know, and, and Leeds were having the, you know, the, the, it, they were having a real struggle breaking through. And it was only till the last bit where we really broke through, you know, um, when it came to Christ Sensio, some of the lose man marked the entire game. Um, yeah. It's not necessarily that he needs a plan B, but I need to see a little bit more from him systematically. We can't just be relying on the quality week in, week out. It needs to be more from Farker. Are we committing to a press? When we are being pressed, why don't we go route one? And when I say that, it sounds very sort of Mike Bassett, England football manager. If a team is pressing you, like Sunderland were tonight, like Blackburn were, like Swansea were, like Middlesbrough were doing offensives, if they're pressing you and you can't play through them, which we can't, because what do we do? Melier, Rodon, Strauch. Kamara, Melier, Rodon, Strout, Kamara. So, so we're doing the entire game, and we've seen that for many games. If that's happening, why don't we encourage our central midfielders to spread the ball? Right, left. Roof the ball over, bypass a press. And we saw at the end of the second half when Elan Melier decided to bypass the press, we saw Dan James getting in because they were predicting. Leeds United were going to play out from the back, so as a unit, they pressed high. So Leeds then played the ball over. That's what you do. That's that's ingenuity. That's creativity. That's pragmatic. That's in-game management. And then you think to yourself, right, okay, you know, we saw saw a few bits. Some of them were the better team in that game in that in that first half. You know, set pieces were a big big problem as we saw, where we were just absolutely pathetic at defending them. Shout out Elan Melee for arguably the save of the season. Unbelievable. Um, but Joe Bellingham should have scored with that header in the first half as well. Set pieces we just couldn't defend. We didn't even see him up for defending the set pieces. Perot, Ethan Ampadu just weren't even aggressive in terms of defending and, and zonally marking their men um, and, the, and their area. And we got into the half and you thought a little bit of encouragement in terms of us getting past the press. But then what happened is in the second half, you're thinking, okay, well, maybe Archie can go 
Archie can then pull to left back. And then you can put Jed Spence at right back because Archie's having a real, not a torrid time, but he's booked up against Jack Clark. He didn't make that adjustment. Jack Clark was thankfully a little bit quieter in that second half because I think they started going down Bar's side and Patrick Roberts when he came on, um, which I thought was a mistake from Sunderland's perspective. But I thought overall, um, that would have been a good change for Leeds and we'd have seen Jed Spence on the right-hand side getting forward a little bit more. Why he didn't bring Willie Nonso on? within 55 minutes, give the team 10 minutes, then bring Willie on so on. But da Daniel Farker does the Daniel Farker thing. And this isn't me um, over being over dramatic, everybody. He does this all the time. And it's been good that we've been winning games. But what he does is he almost has pre-planned substitutions. 70th minute, and I guarantee you're in your living room, you're saying, bring someone on in the 55th minute. Nothing is changing. We're trying to go centrally against a team who are packed out that midfield, packed out that um, you know, that, that just congested that central part. And then we play the ball out wide and then we play the ball back again. Just, just kept going, kept going. And I'm looking at me and Gabriel on the watch and I'm thinking, is he going to change this at any point? Because nothing's, I'm just wondering what he's actually thinking on the bench. Is he, is he, is he still confident that, you know, our players are when, when it's just sideways, uh, backwards, sideways, backwards. No one's beating the man. No one's taking the man on. And when we saw someone take the man on. You know, when did that happen? It was when Willie Nonto came on. Yeah, it was perfect for Willie Nonto that game. Explosiveness, quality. You know, Dan James was out of the game. You could just tell straight away. Certain games you can tell Dan's just out of. And listen, he's been good recently, but he was completely out of that game. They were pressing high and he wasn't able to get his first touchdown and they were pressing him. And he has no real skill and guile in those situations. Dan James is a very particular winger where he's just explosive and runs quick. Um, but where in those situations where you've been pressed high, you need someone who's got quality to be able to get himself out of that situation, a quick shoulder roll, a quick nutmeg. Dan James doesn't have that in, in his arsenal. He doesn't. Nonto has. He didn't recognise it. And then when Sunderland scored, Daniel Farker decided to then throw two attackers on, two two strikers on. And then we, didn't, we, we um, for about 15 minutes, um, I think it was about, about 11, to, uh, 11 to 15 minutes, we put the ball in twice. So we had three strikers on the pitch and we put the ball in twice. Why did he take Jed Spence off? I thought Spence towards the back end of the game was really good. I thought he was getting into those positions and I thought he looked a bit vexed coming off. I thought he was okay in that position. I thought he was starting to cause them a few problems because they were shifting over to Nonto's side because they were thinking he's the problem, which opens up more space for Somerville. This is what we saw against Blackburn. But then he decides to take Spence off. Didn't understand that one. I think he got it massively wrong tonight. I think he got it wrong in 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 so many areas. And I know what he, we all know what he's like. He's going to come on and say Sunderland's a really tough game, and you can't win every game in the championship. Yada yada yada. I know what I'm going to hear from Daniel Farker, but it's a massive massive um, issue. I think when teams decide to press leads, and we said this earlier on when we played Southampton and Stoke City. When teams presses, and actually in, in bouts, Birmingham City at St. Andrews, when teams presses, they press on our first touch, we don't know what to do. We, we don't know what to do. And the problem is, Swansea showed a lot of other teams in the championship that you can do this successfully. Albeit we won the game, but that first half, I feel other teams have picked up from that and thought, right, we can do that. Hello, everyone. I think we're back. I think we're back. <laughs> uh, and I've gone. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. Um, but yeah, uh, apologies for that one. But yeah, I think it was slack again. And I think we're all just getting a little bit used to that at points. Um, but listen, it's not throwing the dummies out the pram. It's not saying, you know, ah, oh, we're in we're in dire straits here. Um, but I just thought systematically he got that wrong. I thought he got that very, very wrong. Um, listen, guys, if I was frozen there, it's probably a good thing for you guys. Um <laughs> 
Uh, missing some of that consistent creativity, says Finn Wilson. Uh, Dan James uh, is favoured because he tracks back better than Willie. If we have Jed at right back, we don't need James' recovery speed so much. That's a good point there, Dan. Uh, we move on to Saturday. We do, Mark. Of course we do. It's, yeah. Um, what is perfect though, Connor? The thing is, Lee, I think I've said this, and, and honestly, mate, it's not that if, if this was any other season, any other season, I wouldn't be as bothered. It's because it's this season. And we have to be perfect. And if we're not perfect, then we're not going to catch the top two. Just is what it is. It's 10 points now, you know. This isn't catastrophe. It is not whatsoever. But we have to be perfect to catch them, you know. And now you're looking at a scenario where we, we have to beat Ipswich. And you're probably looking at Leicester needing to beat Ipswich for us to be able to gain that and Norwich to get something against them and, and us to win those games that we have in between there as well and be perfect. I just, I, I think it, it was a real real um problem tonight and chris has got it bang on why can't we get an onto from the start um over perot perot stays on tonight why rutter i thought was taken off i didn't think rutter was great tonight but the ball was being played into him and he was trying to get things moving what protects to, and listen perot had the strike on goal at the end nearly got us the one one of course he did but I felt I'd have liked to have seen nonto with rutter and somerville i think that's when we're at our most dangerous our most potent i really do and we didn't see that I just thought he got it all wrong. Got, thought he got it all uh, wrong. Um, Fakir is a better coach than you and I. Fact. Yep. Uh, big uh, opportunity missed tonight. I agree with you, mate. Uh, I think Nonsa should have started. Disappointing result. We look so yeggy. Uh, yeggy? Leggy. Um, Jed Spencer tapped better than Perra. I thought he did, mate. I thought he did. And then Jason said Spence was poor. I thought... I don't know, mate. I don't know. I, I, I disagree. I thought it was difficult. Um uh, it was a congested game tonight and I thought everybody was going down Spence's side. I thought Leeds were trying to go down Spence's side. Sunderland's shape was immaculate. It was very, very good, but Leeds were doing nothing. We were t we're ne no one was taking a risk. No one was taking a man on. No one was brave enough to try a quick shimmy. As I've said before, try a nutmeg until Nonto came on. But I thought the only one who was trying to show a little bit of ingenuity, because Somerville was marked out the game, was Jed Spence. I'm not saying he was successful, but I thought at some points he was successful and he was doing okay. And he's at left back, of which it isn't his position. And you know, the funny thing is, in games like this, what would you need? A flying left back. A left back who's bombing up and down the wing, causing problems, but also navigating space for our wingers and being able to put the ball in the box and cause a few problems. What was, what was Sunderland's goal? A ball put into the box. That's all it was. A ball put into the box. Ricochet, Joe Bellingham gets the header in. Why don't we put more balls into the box? Why don't we do it? We don't even do it when the strike's on the pitch. So, yeah, I think it was, I think, from back to front, I'd like to see us been better with set pieces as well. Set pieces, we just, for some reason, we're just going back to where we used to do. And I think zonal marking does irk me a little bit. Um, but at the same time, we're going back to where we were in terms of the quality of our defending. And I'm, I mean, I'm looking at set pieces in that game. There's three in particular. We're not even picking up our men. We're not even picking up men. There's three men inside the box. It's that, that needs to be improved. You know, we can't just rely on the front four every single game, guys. There's got to be systematic improvements. We've got to play better, in my opinion. I don't think we've been good for the last four, five games, really, um, in my opinion. We've been picking up the wins, but I think in games like this, you have to perform well. You know, you have to. And it was too easy for Sunderland tonight. Way too easy. Um Uh, Ian uh, Mark says, uh, to be fair to him, they did a job on us, especially wide. Archie could hardly ever get forward, had more space at the end with three strikes on credit to them. Ampadu, way off a great player. Yeah, I didn't think Ampadu was good tonight at all. Um, but yeah, I, I agree, Sunderland, you got to give credit to them. They were good. They were really, really good tonight. I mean, we came into the game and me and Gabe were chatting and, you know, he was, I don't know, not, in my opinion, you know, me and Gabe had chats about it and I don't think he was too impressed by Sunderland, but... Listen, I don't think the results have been excellent, but they're a good team. They've got a good quality team there. They've got a good setup now. Good owner. They're investing a lot into the youth products. They've got a data RAM model. Um, Sunderland, Sunderland are doing okay at the minute. You know, they're doing all right. And who knows, you know, I do. I think they'll make it into the playoffs again, you know. And, and the interesting thing is now we've been beaten by two, in my opinion, teams who will be in the playoffs in Southampton and Sunderland. So that's definitely something to consider. Um, but yeah, I just think these pressy sides, when they're pressing on Leeds United, we don't know what to do. If if teams, they don't even have to be a pressy side, just implement a press. I don't think Leeds know what to do. The plan is consistently, and there's patterns now. There's patterns. I've said that Birmingham game, Stoke City, Southampton, Swansea, Blackburn. Tonight, there's periods where it's just rely on the lads up front. It's just try play through them, keep trying to play through them. Why don't we play over? 
You know, I just want to see us switching balls. Do you remember under Bielsa when we played possession-based football? And to open up the spaces, you'd see Strout um, and pinging a ball, Cooper pinging a ball, Ben White pinging a ball, you know, angles. Elan Mele pinging that ball is all the perfect word for tonight. And some of the games that we've played, in my opinion, even though we've been getting the wins, have been it's been predictable. It's been predictable. I think mean, that's the worry. Um, it's not a, such a plan B, you know, because plan A needs to work, doesn't it? But it's having different facets to that plan A, not just keep doing what we're doing, short little incisive passes, you know, keep hold of the ball, even if we don't really do anything, and make the subs from the 70 to the 75th minute. And that's what we do every single game. We need more than that. You know, that, that for me, that's not just, that's not going to get us promoted. We need more. I need to see if we're a pressy team or not. Do we press? Like, is it, a, you know, are we in a mid block? Do we half press? Do we press to certain teams? You know, are we a pressy unit collectively? I don't know. Um, set plays drastically need to improve. And in game management from Daniel Farker, I think is okay. I think it's all right. But yeah, this isn't me just harping on negativity, guys. But I do, I would like to say tonight, it's been a, a you know, truthfully, it's been a big opportunity missed tonight. Big opportunity. Um, or at least keeping up. You know, I said 1-1 one, one tonight. You know, I wouldn't have been too dissatisfied with 1-1. One, one. It'd have been tough because we'd have gone, you know, points behind Ipswich again. It sounds like I'm contradicting myself here. But 1-1 one, one with a decent performance um, isn't the end of the world. 1-0 and a poor performance like that, which systematically still shows me that we have issues, is a little bit of a problem, in my opinion. Um... Uh, James Rutter bullied tonight. Rutter was too nice. He needs to hold the ball up. Our game plan doesn't move. Uh, and that's a worry. Do you know what it is, Dan? I think you're right with a lot of what you're saying there. But I think in the first half, mate, he was the only one doing anything. You know, he gets to the byline a couple of times, drill the ball across the box. And that's all we had. That's all we did the first half. So I saw a lot of pass the ball into Rutter and you get there entire because we're trying to play like a really compact defensive block. You get Joe Bellingham then on, on, on Rutter's toes. You get Pritchard then going on um, Rutter's toes as well. And the defensive line will just congest onto Rutter. But what can he do? What can he do? And then we wouldn't follow our runs. So you're not looking for a one-two. You know, you're not looking for a cute little triangle. They just stay there. So they pass the ball to Rutter and they just stay. Now, Ampadu wouldn't follow his run. Kamara's not following his run. Just stay. Pass the ball to Rutter. Go on, you turn and do something. And that's the problem. That's what I've said to you guys in recent weeks. With Somerville, give the ball to Somerville and he'll do something. That's the game plan. I've said that before. I've said that before with, you know, with with those two in particular. And I think you saw it a little bit at the end with Nonto. Give the ball to Nonto and see what happens. There has to be more of a system. It needs to be more fluid. It needs to be more dynamic. They need to understand each other a little bit more. Um, not just the front four understanding each other, you know? And yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't, yeah, I wasn't impressed with that whatsoever. Uh, Perot is far too lazy in my view, not sharp enough. I'd agree with your latter point there, Keith. He's not sharp enough, and and, I, and you know I, I have these conversations with with people um, about Perot um, or Peru, I should say. I don't mind him, but he just he seems half a yard off it a lot of the time. I think maybe it's when you compare it to our front four. Um, his goal scoring record is is decent with Leeds so far. But I still want to see more for 16 million. I still need to see more. There's too many games where he's just not in the game whatsoever. And the problem is the midfield suffers because he's he's a midfielder. We are using him as a midfielder. And I'm seeing too many games, Blackburn included, where the midfield's getting outnumbered because Perot's not doing his job, which is to be a part of the midfield, be a 10, be an advanced eight, whatever. I don't know what he is. Is it, is it just a front four? Is it a four that just go forward and, and, and do whatever they want. Have we, do, have we only got two in midfield? Because I'm seeing too many midfields play Leeds United with three in there and them getting outnumbered. It's, it's too many. There's too many teams doing that now, you know? So I need to understand what Perot's role is. I don't really get it, to be honest. And I think that's where the confusion's coming uh, for a lot of Leeds fans. Um... Steely Man uh, says that was diabolical. They completely owned us. Fark was out smart by a caretaker coach. Uh, we only had one decent pro chance. Melee saved as well. Another off the line from Strout. Yep. Yeah, can't disagree with that, mate. 
Can't disagree. Uh, Perot had the best chance. He's a different type of player. Uh, with that being said, we need a proper camp. Uh, Colin, I call long, long season. Rather be the hunter than the hunted. We're still in the mix. It was always going to be a horrid fixture. Let's put it right. March on together. Yeah, Colt, you're not wrong, mate. And that's all we can do. That's all we can do. And I think I'm on Jonesy's uh, standpoint. I'm just frustrated. And I can see him on his press call. I can see him talking now as the press. I know exactly what he's going to be saying. <laughs> It's as scripted as his substitutions. And I like Farker. I do like Farker. Need to see more from him if we get to the Premier League, to be honest, because I am a little bit... It, it does feel that it is the... And listen, when you've got a front four, a front six, if you're including the two lads on the bench like we have, it's a lot of it's going to be the forward the forward line. Um, I think it's because we're almost blessed and cursed with how systematically good we were with Marcelo Bielsa. And that's, that's that's probably where my mind's at a little bit. I just need to see a little bit more from him when they that when teams are pressing us because there's no that we don't know what to, we just carry on doing the same thing, and it's a problem. It's a big problem because if more teams in the second calendar part of the season are just going to commit as a unit to pressing us, is this going to be now a big big issue for Leeds? You know, there's ways around it. I'm not a coach, but you can see ways around it. A press, you know, so. No, I know, right? I know, but the context is, mate. It's 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 not for me. It's just what I'm talking about tactically. I think sometimes he he's it's not he's got it wrong. We've won seven games out of nine for goodness' sake. But as I've said, the press we've seen we've seen more and more teams do it to Leeds now, and we've seen similar games, but individual quality. That's what I'm saying. Um, and the problem is we have to be perfect now. That, like I don't know what more what more else to say about that, mate. 10 points behind Ipswich likely going to be what is it 12 points behind Leicester we just we need to be perfect now you know we just need to keep keep being good and winning every single game um yeah gonna leave it there guys listen I'm not I'm not saying uh this is this is dummies out the pram or anything like that but as Cole says it's a long season it is it's a horrible fixture tonight and it was um, it's just disappointing. It's really disappointing. Um, I thought he got it wrong tonight. I did. Um, that's not me saying he's a bad manager. That's not me saying I'd have another manager. I just need to see a little bit more from him sometimes. Um, I think when it comes to, yeah, just pragmatism, I think. But could be wrong. I'm just an armchair fan. Um, but let's roll on to the next game and hopefully we can get it right, everyone. We're going to be live uh, on the... Um, On the Patreon tonight, we're going to be doing the player ratings uh, immediately after this. So if you want to head on over there, guys, every every proceed goes to the the, the channel's upkeep, which I'm trying to increase content wise. Uh, we've got podcasts tomorrow with Gabe. No, we should be good with Generation Leads over there as well. So just an additional bit of stuff. And um, we will have your Leeds United news tomorrow as always, and and an evening update as well. We're going to start doing one live stream and one uh, pre-recorded update. Because I know you guys like a little bit of the variation. And um, listen, I hope you have a good one, guys. Um, keep your chin up, and yeah. Uh, Leeds United roll on, don't we? See you in a bit.